Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Ji Xiaojun in Beijing. And today we're continuing with our series about the discovery of the famous Oracle Bonds. The story goes back to the summer of 1899, when Wang Yurong, who was the Minister of Education under the Qing Dynasty, was prescribed some medicine based on so-called dragon bones to cure an illness. On what were in fact animal fossils, he noticed some carved marks. He had discovered an Oracle Bond script, the oldest example of Chinese characters. However, some doubt has been cast on the truth of this version of events. The trouble is, pharmacists never bought dragon bones with inscriptions on them. Anyway, they always crushed the bones before selling them. So it seems unlikely that Wang Yurong would have come across dragon bones bearing inscriptions at the pharmacy. In a letter to the periodical Chinese Cultural Relics, Zhou Shaoliang said, Pharmacies did not crush the dragon bones. They sold them in pieces of various sizes. It would have been possible to find some that still bore inscriptions. Until the 1930s, pharmacies were still selling dragon bones in pieces of various sizes. When Wang Guobao became an apprentice at Huanyantang Pharmacy, he was sought how to fill Chinese medicine prescriptions. He went on to work in the trade for 39 years. This是龙骨 Cao Dingyuan with the Archaeology Institute under the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences has taken part in many excavations of tortoise shells and animal bones bearing inscriptions. He shows us some pieces of broken bones that bear distinct traces of carving. 我们结合的甲骨有非常多因为接受了接触的甲骨有非常多我们结合的甲骨有大片的也有小片的有的小片呢它就是直径也就是一点多到两点这个长宽啊在这个范围之内有的甚至还小有的甚至在长宽都在一
In his article, History of Cultural Relics, Chen Zhongyuan wrote, During the Xianfeng and Guangxu periods, famous imperial court ministers and scholars such as Pan Zuyin, Wang Tonghe, Li Wentian, Wu Dacheng, and Wang Yirong often visited Liu Li Chang. Many men of letters followed their example. Some imperial court officials would go to Liu Li Chang as soon as they finished work. Wang Yirong liked to visit antique markets. According to Chronicle of Wang Yirong's life, he never had much money, but he would buy any antique he came across. Even when he was living in poverty, he would sell his clothes to buy some antique he took a fancy to. Over time, he would have acquired enough knowledge to recognize inscriptions on dragon bones when he saw them. Qing Mi Gu, a store on Liu Li Chang, sold office supplies to the six ministries of the Qing Imperial Court and bronzes with inscriptions and other antiques on the side. Sun Qiaofan, deputy manager of Qing Mi Gu, became a friend of Wang Yirong and Duan Fang through his dealings in bronze artifacts. In the summer of 1899, Sun Qiaofan paid a visit to Wang Yirong. Wang Yirong told Sun Qiaofan about a strange object he had acquired only recently, and he showed it to the antique dealer. The object Wang Yirong showed Sun Qiaofan was a piece of dragon bone that bore an inscription. Wang Yirong told Sun that he came across it by accident in a parcel of medicine one of his family members bought for him from West Hernian Tang Pharmacy in Tsai Shukou. Wang Yirong said that the characters on the dragon bone were very like those inscribed on a number of bronze artifacts owned by his family. Wang Yirong asked Sun Qiaofan to watch out for animal bones inscribed with characters if he saw them on the antique market. He wanted to collect them. In the early 1940s, Chen Zhongyuan, author of the book History of Cultural Relics, was an apprentice at Wen Gujai Studio in Liu Li Chang. His uncle Chen Zhongfu was manager of the antique shop and a close friend of Wang Youtian, manager of Da Ya Jai Studio, another antique shop. Fan Shizhou, Chen Zhongyuan's uncle, was manager of the famous antique shop Yun Yu Jai Studio in Liu Li Chang. Chen Zhongyuan can tell many stories and anecdotes from those days about Beijing's antique collectors. So, 所以孙秋凡说这个王一荣发现这甲骨文第一个发现呢甲骨之父这是只能做个旁证是吧就人说他没有文字根据啊说这个旁证呢从我们古原来的古玩行来说认为是非常缺钱的。Soon after Wang Yirong began to collect dragon bones with inscriptions, people began to bring them to his house. The first visitor was an antique dealer by the name of Fan. In the preface to Tortoise Shells Hidden at Tia Yuan, Liu Er wrote that a visitor named Fan brought more than 100 pieces of dragon bones to the capital, and that Wang Yirong, also known as the Master of Wenmin, was overjoyed and paid the visitor handsomely. Master of Wenmin was the honorary title the Qing Imperial Court conferred on him posthumously. But how did Liu Er know that someone sold inscribed bones to Wang Yirong? Liu Er na, gen Wang Yirong na you sijiao. 刘娥曾经在北京待在北京有一段呃在北京的时候，他呢曾经到王玉荣家去过，啊，就客居京师啊，在那儿，他看着这个王玉荣有这些东西，啊，有些家国。In his diary, Liu Er wrote that Wang Yirong told him in person about an antique dealer delivering inscribed bones to him, and that Wang had twice bought inscribed bones from this person. Shi Wang wrote in his book, Inscriptions on Tortoise Shells, published in 1933, that the first person to discover the oracle bone inscriptions was Liu Er. He was, however, quite wrong. After Wang Yirong died, 
Leo Er bought most of the inscribed tortoise shells and animal bones from Wang's family. He then studied them and wrote the first ever book on the subject under the title Hidden Tortoise at Tia Yuan. According to Liu Yue's records, the merchant named Fan sent the inscribed bones to Wang Yuron in the year 1900. However, the scholars Luo Zhenyu and Wang Guowei, as well as the Canadian missionary J.M. Menzies, would later insist that Wang Yuron discovered the animal bone inscriptions in his package of medicine and board inscribed bones from a merchant in the summer of 1899. The question is, how did this discrepancy arise? Wu Houshuan came up with an answer. He wrote that J. M. Menzies made it clear in his book Studies on Inscriptions on Oracle Bones, published in 1933, that Wang Yirong bought 12 pieces of inscribed bone in 1899, and that the following year he bought more than 800 pieces. Because most of the bones in Wang Yirong's collection were purchased in 1900, Liu Er had written that Wang Yirong began to collect inscribed bones in that year. But in point of fact, he began to collect them the year before, in 1899. In his book, A General Introduction to the Oracle Bones from the Waste of Yin, Chen Mengjia stated that the merchant named Fan sold inscribed animal bones to Wang Yirong on two occasions. The first deal was struck in the autumn of 1899, when Wang bought 12 pieces for two tails of silver apiece. The second deal for 800 pieces took place in the spring of 1900. Later, a merchant named Zhao from Wei Xian sold several hundred inscribed bones to Wang Yirong. Wang Yirong learned that both inscribed bone dealers came from Wei Xian in Shandong province. Wang Guowei wrote in his book New Discoveries in the Past Two or Three Decades that Wang Yirong raised the rate paid to the Wei Xian merchants to four tails of silver apiece. Luo Jianyu's brother, Luo Jianchang, wrote in his book Ancient Sites Along the Huanhe and Luo Shui Rivers that no one knew that merchant fan sold inscribed bones to Wang Yirong. In 1982, it was noticed that a man by the name of Wang Xiang in Tianjin had declared in a book published after his death that the date ascribed to the discovery of the inscribed tortoise shells and animal bones should be 1898. Wang wrote that in that year, Fan Shouxuan, an antique dealer from Weixian, sold him animal bones inscribed with Chinese characters. Wang asserted that the discovery date of the oracle bone inscriptions was one year earlier than the time Wang Yirong was said to have discovered them. The merchant who sold the inscribed bones to Wang Yirong was also named Fan, and he also came from Wei Xian. Were they the same person? If it could be shown that Wang Xiang noticed the inscriptions on animal bones a year before Wang Yirong, should the year of the discovery of the oracle bone inscriptions be changed from 1899 to 1898? In the summer of 1899, Wang Yirong, Minister of Education of the Qing Dynasty, noticed some carved marks on pieces of dragon bone, an ingredient in the Chinese medicine he was taking. It is said that as a result, he became the discoverer of inscriptions on tortoise shells and animal bones, the oldest form of Chinese script. But in 1982, 83 years later, it was noticed that a man by the name of Wang Xiang had claimed in a book published after his death that he saw the ancient inscriptions carved on tortoise shells and animal bones one year before Wang Yirong saw them. Was there any truth to this assertion? Wang Xiang, born in 1876 into the family of a scholar in the city of Tianjin, claimed to have seen oracle bone inscriptions when he was 22 years old. In 1982, a reader came across a statement in Wang Xiang's posthumous work, Yin Inscriptions of Fu Studio. According to the statement in question, in 1898, an antique dealer from Wei Xian by the name of Fan Shouxuan brought to him from Hunan province some tortoise shells and animal bones that bore inscriptions. Wang Xiang sought the opinion of Meng Ding Xiang, who told him that the inscriptions were definitely a kind of Chinese script from remote times and he urged Wang Xiang to buy them. In October the following year, 
Fan Shoshuan turned up with the inscribed bones once again. Although they did not have much money, Wang Xiang and Meng Dingxiang nevertheless bought some of the bones. In his posthumously published monograph, Wang Xiang concluded the Yin inscriptions became known to the world in 1898. The editor of the work included a special note. It read, We published Wang Xiang's posthumous work because people in academic fields have lacked an accurate and comprehensive understanding of the oracle bone inscriptions. Apparently, there is a divergence of opinion concerning who was the first to discover the Argobon inscriptions. Wang Yuxin rejects the claim that Wang Xiang discovered the Argobon inscriptions in 1898. As an opinion, he bases on something written by Wang Xiang himself. In the preface to Call for Contributions to the Yin Inscriptions of Fu Studio, published in 1925, Wang Xiang wrote, From the Guangxu period of the Qing Dynasty to the first year of the Republic of China, I collected quite a few inscriptions on tortoise shells and animal bones. In List of Oracle Bones, published in 1933, he wrote, Oracle bones were excavated in Anyang County in Hunan Province. That autumn, a merchant from Weixian bought some to sell. Two years later, he stated in yet another book, this one published under the title Rubbings of Yin Inscriptions from Ilu Garden. In 1898, an antique dealer named Fan came to sell me some bones bearing carved markings. My fellow townsman, Meng Dingsheng, deduced that they might be an ancient script, and he urged me to have a look. In the autumn of the following year, the antique dealer came to me with some tortoise shells with inscriptions. After that, the Yin inscriptions became known to the world. The autumn Wang Xiang referred to was the autumn of 1899. In all three of his books, Wang Xiang made it clear that he discovered the oracle bone inscriptions in 1898. But when this statement is compared to an article he published in 1955, it seems impossible to agree with this statement. 一八九八年这个王香跟着孟景生先生是见到了古董商范寿轩跟他们念的说安阳那块啊说有一种古董商古董商呢好像有一些刻画什么东西这个当时一八九八年并没看到范寿轩也没在没在这古董作为龙国也
fan, was very happy. If this statement is accurate, then it seems clear that Wang Xiang and Meng Dingsheng bought the inscribed bones before Wang Yirong. If not, Wang Xiang wouldn't have said the rest of the inscribed bones were sold to Wang Yirong. But Wang Xiang said that he'd heard about the sale from someone else, who told him this version of events. It seems clear from the context that the antique dealer Fan Shouxuan sold inscribed bones to Wang Yirong first. It could be that after Fan Shouxuan sold inscribed bones to Wang Yirong, he went to Tianjin again and told Wang Xiang that he earned 3,000 taels of silver. If that is true, then the date of the discovery of the oracle bone inscriptions will have to be redefined. But we know for certain that this is not the case. Another piece of evidence makes it obvious that Wang Yirong was indeed the first to discover the oracle bone inscriptions. Wang Xiang himself wrote the following in his book, A Note on the Rubbings of Yin Inscriptions. In 1898, an antique dealer came upon some bones inscribed with Chinese characters, but I did not buy them. When he came to Tianjin again in 1899, he brought some with him to sell. He called them inscribed tortoise shells. In the preface to his book, Remaining Pearls of the Inscriptions from Chuen Yu Studio, Wang Xiang said the same thing again, that he inquired about the inscribed bones Fan had mentioned earlier. The terms tortoise inscription and yin inscription were not in use before they were used by Wang Yirong. Another piece of evidence is the biography of the antique dealer Fan Shouxuan. Annals of Weixian County states, Fan Shouxuan from Fanjia village was an antique dealer. One day, his younger brother Fan Huaiqing went to a small village in Jiangde. A local villager showed him some pieces of tortoiseshell that bore inscriptions. He bought 40 to 50 pieces. Fan Shouxuan took them to the capital and sold them to Wang Yirong at a high price. The inscriptions on tortoise shells and animal bones thus became known to the world. Fan Shouxuan, you have to learn Chinese language, it's Fan Shouxuan. Fan Shouxuan, sometimes you hear it and hear it, it's the same with Shouxuan, so sometimes you call it Fan Shouxuan. It's called Fan Chunqing, right? Fan Chunqing, you hear it from Chinese language to Beijing, sometimes it's not accurate, it's called Fan Chunqing, right? 那范范守轩呢，变成范寿轩了，所以呢，基本上这个名字是啊，这有点有点误，但是也就是这个人。In those days, the word antique in Chinese covered a great variety of artifacts. During the Qing Dynasty, a number of merchants began to specialize in selling artifacts from remote times, and they became known as antique dealers. The dealers in North China were divided into two factions: the Beijing faction and the Shandong faction. Beijing antique dealers led a particularly extravagant lifestyle. They lived in hotels and waited in their rooms to meet with sellers. The dealers from Shandong province, on the other hand, traveled around rural villages and stayed in rough hostel establishments and led a much harder life. Annals of Weixian County tells us, Fan Xiaoxuan came from a well-off family that had three hectares of farmland. He mortgaged the family property in order to trade in antiques. After he obtained some inscribed tortoiseshells and animal bones, he took them to Beijing and sold them first to Wang Yirong and then to Liu Er and Duan Fang. He struck it rich from these deals. Another Wang Yirong's discovery of the oracle bones in 1899 precipitated a rush of interest in them as they became collector's items. However, few, if any, of these collectors knew where the oracle bones had been found. 
nor did they know which historical era they belonged to. All that changed four years later when another scholar, Liu E, identified the writing as ancient characters from the Shang Dynasty over 3,000 years ago. We'll learn more about the origin of the fascinating Argo bonds in our next program. And thank you for staying with us on New Frontiers. I'm Ji Xiaojun on CCTV International. See you soon.